This calf? No, this is a KEF 104. We've already done that video. But there, there, I, there's something here I don't think I showed you on that. See the port on the calf? I don't think I discussed this on our first video. This port, they always come out. They'll fall out. Look, there's no glue there. It, the glue did not stick to this polycarbonate. But it stuck to the particle board. So, anytime, anytime I do a 104 or 105, I... I I pull this off and put some glue on it and then put it back in there so it won't fall out or rattle or whatever. And as an issue, this is this is 1035. As an issue, see the same thing. Look at the little four little dabs of glue there. This was probably put on by an owner later on because you can see the original glue. It sticks on the particle board, it won't come off, but it doesn't stick to this plastic at all, so Anytime you do a cap, pull these loose and put some good uh, water base type glue there and put that back on. All right. Now, to start with, we've got to pull the, the unit here. I've pulled the bolts out. Big long bolt. That happens to be a number five Allen head. So we pour, pull these four bolts out of the front. Let's move this out of the way. See if we can move this off here. Now, let's go the other way. There we go. I pulled it that way and it unplugged itself. Alright, so this is self-explanatory and you can't really get it on wrong unless you try. Now when, when you put it all back together, clean these connectors with uh, deoxid or another high quality cleaner. And it also we got more crossover components in here and then we've got the bolt that holds the connecting rod for the woofers right there. So. Another little thing you want to do here when you take this part, this is a handy thing to have a set of colored sharpies when you're doing this kind of work. Now, these connections here, we don't have to mark these because they're labeled plus and minus red, plus, black, minus, okay? But now these over here, See, we have them, they have them listed alphabetically. But what you could also do is, if you have a set of colored Sharpies, so you can put a colored mark by each one of them. And then you don't have to necessarily worry about maybe writing all this down or getting confused. Green. It just makes it simpler and quicker and makes it kind of error proof when you go ahead and mark that off with the Sharpies. Now of course we're going to change out all these electrolytic capacitors and that's why we're going to take this board loose and this is really a fantastic setup because unlike working on a lot of speakers where you have to to get to the crossover you have to work through a woofer cutout or some really tight space. With this setup, we can pull this crossover board off of here, set it on our bench and do anything we need to do to it. This is very, very well thought out. I like the way Klipsch engineers did this. Okay. So we've, we've got to take this section out. We've already unplugged the wires on this and we'll do the same thing. We color coded all the connections. You can see all the wiring harness in here now. But here's something else I want you to notice in here. See the woofer magnet right here in the middle? That bolt holds the connecting rod. That bolt has to come out before you can remove the rod to remove the speakers. So we've removed the crossover section here noted where all our wires go and now we're going to remove that bolt right there 
All right, we've got our two crossover boards set here on the bench now. And the first thing I've done because of the physical size, I, I pulled out the largest value caps that we have. And you see right here on, on this section of the board, you see I'm, I'm going to have to stack these caps. I've taken a 300, a 150, and a 30 together to equal two of these 240s. So 240 twice is 480. So I've made up 480 here and I physically couldn't fit the 480 onto this board so I had to stand the caps up vertically. Now anytime you do this you want to make sure you've got physical clearance inside the box and in this case we've got plenty. But look here's why we're recapping. Let's look at this cap. This is supposed to be a 240. All right, it's measuring 276, and instead of a tenth of an ohm of ESR, which would be optimal, we have 0.2 instead of 0.02, which was would be what we'd we'd like to see here. But there's two of these 240s sitting here together that connect to the same place, the same trace on the board, which means they're just they're added together so 2 times 240 480 so we've had to make 480 out of a 300 a 150 and a 30 and we had to stand them up vertically here to fit them on the board now I will be able to fit the 80 right here and the 100 right here I'll, I'll be able to fit those it'll be a tight fit but I'll be able to get them in there so the, the thing to note about this is when and where have you ever seen an electrolytic capacitor of a 240 microfarads that is that small physically. So when you're doing CAF, if you're not going to get the set of AL caps, and not all of these are available nowadays, but if you're not going to get the set of AL caps, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to be clever with actually being able to fit them physically on the board. One more time, let's look. This is a, this is a 240. This is a 100. You see what I'm saying? That is extremely small for a, two, of course, it's only a 25 volt cap, 25 volt, and I'm using 100 volt caps. So it's okay to, to upgrade as far as that goes. But the 225s together would have been a 50 volt cap. So anyway, physical fit. This If you don't get this set of caps, and you probably can't get this set of caps, uh, it depends. The availability is, is off and on over the years. But it's pretty small for a 240. Okay, now we next thing we gotta do is get the woofers out so we can rebuild them. And we've got two woofers now. We showed you you take the mid mid high pack off, and it gives us it has two cutouts here. These are accesses to get to install and remove the woofer. Now we're pulling the damping material out. Remember, put this off the side so you know where it goes. Put it back in like you got it out. There's a certain amount goes in the bottom, certain amount goes in the top. So let's look up in here and see if we can see down in here. All right, you see the top woofer? All right, it's it's aimed up. It's an upward firing woofer. There's one more piece of damping material. This foam goes around the cabinet and right up against the woofer. But you can't get the woofer bolts out with this in a way, so you have to pull it out too. Now you see, the calf uses three mounting bolts and in any case they're locked in with a second nut but look at the damage the foam outer suspension is rotted and the foam inner suspension that the donut they call it is rotted so that has to come out of there now inside the middle of this pole piece is the nut that holds on this connecting rod there's a connecting rod that ties the two woofers together. In the bottom of the magnet, the back plate of the top woofer, and then 
to the magnet through the top, the pole piece, of the lower woofer. And the lower woofer, you can't just pull out that one little piece of foam because the foam is all the way down the back and the sides and it's glued on. And this is problematic because you've got to pull that foam away where you can get to the mounting screws but then you want it because it's going to be visible when you get done it, looking in this port you can see it so you don't want to tear it all up when you put it back in place you want it to be you know you want it to, to, to be functional and to look nice but so we've got a, a nut on the top and then let's look in the bottom cavity all right here's the nut that's holding that rod in the bottom so first thing we got to do after we get the networks out is we've got to take this connecting rod loose but we don't pull it yet and then we go back up here to the access hatch and the access hatch and we have to remove both the woofers there's three bolts both both the bolt sets the nuts are on the top side of each one and then there's a nut uh, a bolt that connects this this rod both of those nuts have to those bolts have to come out of there so you can remove the rod and then you can remove the two drive units to get them out on your bench where you can re-foam them. All right, we'll come back later. So we take the bolt that holds the rod in out of the bottom unit. And then we have to go in through the center of the top to remove that, that bolt. But at this point, what we need to do, and this is an important thing about doing this particular model, we have to remove the top woofer first, then the connecting rod, then the bottom woofer. And when we put it back together, we need to reverse that. Install the bottom woofer first, then the connecting rod, and then finally the top woofer. You need to do it in that order or you're going to have a really hard time putting this thing back together got the new foam on uh, I didn't show this process because we we've, we've got several other videos where we show how to clean the frame and do the foam and other people have videos about foam so that's readily available I want to show you something else about this process when you're doing this so let's look over here on the bench now these don't have these have a connecting rod and so they don't have a dust cap people call the donut and it goes here to seal the gap to keep things from getting down in the gap so it, that corrodes and rots away too now we've got shims in here we always use shims to center the voice coil in this case we've got this flange that's glued to the pole piece and you've got to make sure when you do these that that flange is solidly attached to that pole piece if that has come loose in any way you need to remove that and epoxy it back in place you can't have that coming loose so anyway we can fit the shims in around it now I want to show you a couple of things we're getting to because a lot of these things we're doing they're they're starting to be in excess of 40 or 50 years old we're starting to see failures in other glue joints you get something here where I can point this out to you down in here where the cone attaches to the form you've got a little bit of reveal here a couple of millimeters and you can probably see what I've done once I got it shimmed and all cleaned up I took some adhesive and I put it down in here and I spread it around with a brush and made sure it didn't get off into the gap because I'm reinforcing this glue joint with a voice coil form to the cone in case it fails now or in the future it's getting old now I don't know if we can see down in here if we can give you a good look but you could also reinforce that glue joint where the spider comes in contact with a cone especially if the spider and the cone come together we get our long nozzle applicator down in here and we get a glue bead down in here always shim before you glue anything so we get another glue bead down in here we'll spread that glue around in here with a brush and we'll make sure it gets up on the cone and on the spider and even sometimes on these really loose spiders if we feel like the spider has got excessive wear we'll go ahead and put this water-based compound on the spider and spread it around with a brush to stiffen to return some of that original compliance 
Okay, we're ready to put the woofers back in the the 103. What I wanted to what I wanted to show you was if you you have to reinstall the bottom woofer first, and um, so that because of the connecting rod, so you need to do the bottom one first. But if you put the bottom woofer in, and then you try to do your soldering in in the cavity here in the bottom. It, it's going to be very difficult. It can be done, but you're going to be reaching in that cavity and and trying to suck. So what you do what, before you reconnect the wiring harness is bring the wiring harness up through this through the access hatch here and go ahead and solder it. All right. Now when you put it in, and it's kind of difficult to get back in because you've got thick foam on both sides and foam on the back. And if you don't want to rip that out and have to and tear it up and then you know have to reinstall it and it's all tore, I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna slide it back in and I'm gonna work it back and forth through the foam and get it on its landing and get it bolted back in. Then I'm gonna install the connecting rod and then I'm going to it, it's the same situation here with the top woofer. If you wait to do the soldering after you get the woofer installed you're you're gonna to have to be a contortionist to get that done so um, what you want to do is you you don't have the option of getting the wiring harness loose like you did on the bottom uh, there's no slack and it's glued through the the hole that comes through that baffle but what you can do is lay the other woofer down Get it, get it through the access hatch. Reach in through the hole, see? Doing like that. And then pull it up here and lay it in like this. And then now attach your wires and reach in through the access hole to do your soldering before you actually lift the woofer into place and mount it. Otherwise, there again, it's going to be very difficult. So you need to do that. So be aware. Do the soldering before you actually mount the woofers, and then put the bottom one in first, then the connecting rod, then the top woofer. All right, we've got the uh, the caps finalized now. Uh, some people ask me in the comments, you know, to finish the video, we certainly would have liked to have heard those. Well. Okay, I'm going to send you an MP3 file that you're going to listen to through your little tiny computer speakers, and that's going to tell you what these sound like. Um, no, if you believe that, uh, that's okay. You can believe whatever you want to believe. But let me point out one other thing, and this, this has to do with any speaker that's set up to buy wire or to buy wiring. And, and by the way, it's another subject, but buy wiring is not the same as buy amping. Anyway, on these, what I do with these types of connectors, when we put them together, instead of any kind of a strap or a bar that comes with them, I bear the wire. And I don't do by wiring. I don't believe that it actually achieves anything. Well, I take my one wire and I run it, I bear it where it'll get to both of these. And I connect them together on the same wire. That way I don't have a problem with a strap coming loose or any, any of that kind of stuff. So that's the way I do it. Anyway, capture final eye ready to go.